I got a new haircut. Yes, so I can see that. Hello. Hi. Welcome. We are Tea and Toffees. I am Nightshade. An under demon. And hi, I'm Cecilia, a former witch. I have a question for you this week. You do? Yes, Ooh. for this episode where we are starting Harry Potter and the Prison of Azkaban. What is your mm -hmm. favorite magical creature? Oh, I also have more mm. questions for this book about Bogarts and Animagus Patronus forms. So we have to make at least three parts. Shouldn't be that okay. hard. My personal mm -hmm. favorite, because of course I'm going first, would be Thestrals. Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah. No surprise there. That was a very predictable answer. Yes. 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 Um, what is my favorite magical creature? There are a lot of magical creatures I don't know about. So, hard for me to answer. But I will try anyways. Um, I like the other winged horses. Like, I hope I, uh, yeah, I will totally mispronounce these. Um, Granian, Ethanin, and the Abraxan. Uh, Ethanin, Ethan, who knows? I certainly don't. Neither do I. I think, I think I also like birds or winged creatures. Um, because it's like, okay, I also like the phoenix and the Jobonol, however you pronounce that I one. Think um, it would be Jobonol. Silent K. No. Who knows? English, Jobonol. you know? Mm. They like to, yeah. to do that. Not phonetic. Uh, the night bus. And then the knight bus. <laughs> <laughs> the knight bus. <laughs> okay. Yes, sure. Uh, yeah, back to the magical creatures. Um, the Okami reminded me of the Eastern dragons when I first saw it. Mm. Mm. Yeah, the more I looked at it, the more I was like, mm, mm. maybe not after all. No. But at first glance, I was like, hmm. Mm. Uh, yeah, now for, for, for the two that are also competing for my favorite, and I, I, I can't decide, uh, Thunderbird. And Jackalope. Well, in that case, since you like wing creatures, you'd have to go with the bull putting yes. instead of the Jackalope. Oh, what even is that? Uh, this. Right here on screen. This. This. Oh, this. Mm. Look at it. Mm. Um, yes, uh, yes, it's, oh, it's so cute. I want to have it. Can I have it? Yes. Yes, that is my favorite. You're absolutely correct. Of course you are correct. And it is not <sighs> canon. Uh, so choose one that appears in the books. <sighs> Darn it. Darn it. Why is it not canon? Um, the phoenixes. Phoenixes are nice. Oh, so phoenix. Of course you choose the one that would hate me. Thanks. Yeah, of course. Uh, what else would I choose? Uh, uh, oh, oh no. Okay, okay. Book three. I mean, I can't even see the Thestrals. I can't even see them. But you... No, you can. I'm dead. You know me. You see me de being dead right in front of you, so you would see yes. them as well. Does that mean as having witnessed death? Oh. Well, I saw... I... I mean, it's, I don't know, is it the, do you need to witness the dying process? I or mean, is it alright if you see the person after they died? I mean, I have a note about uh, that later, uh, when they reach Hogwarts and uh, Harry sees the moving carriages. Because he can't see the pestrels, but he has already seen his mother being murdered right in front of his eyes. And cruel, when he was a baby. technically, and stuff. Yeah, it's, it's inconsistent. Yes. It's inconsistent. And he should have seen it on the way back. From Hogwarts after Cedric's death, whatever. But yeah, it's... A yes, uh, that's true. We know that it's Neville like, can mm -hmm. see it because he saw his grandfather die? I'm not sure. 
and oh, Luna. And, but it's like, is it where they there while they died, or is it just yeah, this person I've seen them alive and now they are dead? But and that's enough. I'm not sure. No, and I was like, yeah, do I have to consciously remember the dying because Harry doesn't consciously remember his mother dying? He shouldn't be able to. Anyway, we will have a discussion yeah. about that later. But I think. <laughs> Yes. We've been living together mm-hmm. for several years. We've known each other for, yes. I don't know, six or seven years now. Yes. That's enough exposure to a dead being to make you see Thestros, I say. And you see. Okay. What? Wouldn't you? I if guess, you, if uh, you've lived together, yeah, if you've maybe. known a dead being for like so many years, then obviously that should be like as you've experienced. But you are. Uh, well, you are undead. Does that count as dead? Because you are undead. I'm not alive and anymore. I'm dead, demon. Yeah, there's there's a dead and undead. <laughs> I mean, I could also say I'm undead because I'm not dead, but <laughs> I'm still living. You are, you are alive. You're not dead, you're alive. I'm not alive. I'm technically dead, but moving, <laughs> so I'm undead. You are still... Uh, yeah. It's complicated. I have, uh, You would probably just make sure that I can see them. You would just make sure. Yeah. For me, it's a given since, like, I died. That that, that counts, right? That must count. I guess. I guess. I've, I've experienced it as close. Died. I've experienced death as closely as you can. <laughs> There's no closer than this. <laughs> yes, you'd even died yourself. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, so. Ah. Yes. Book three. Harry Potter and... The Prison of Azkaban, not the Chamber of Secrets. Yes. <laughs> I guess you forgot to change Yes, that. I forgot to. Hey, I changed oh, the book. Potter, book three. It says book three. It says book three. The Chamber no, no. of Secrets. Oh, no. Wait. Um, well, yeah, book three maybe is definitely, definitely the Chamber. Mm. <laughs> anyway. Definitely. The Prison of Azkaban. Owl Post is chapter one. This chapter starts with recap right off the bat it is at least not as bad in this book chamber secrets was worse but that is not to say that it was good it is not well done it really isn't well we love recaps don't we absolutely we so love with them. Well, if they're well done, I don't mind at all. But, you know, it would be more surprising if it were actually good. True. But it isn't. So, so we're just like, oh, that's it for this week. Our Mary, so- sorry, Harry Potter. Harry Potter is hmm. doing, secretly doing his homework, hiding it under the blanket in his room. Oh. <gasps> Harry wants to do his homework? What a weird child. I was fine with doing my homework. I didn't mind. But that doesn't mean that I had a particular wish to do them. Only when the assignment was interesting, then I actually wanted to do my homework. We also didn't really have homework over the holidays. We were supposed to enjoy our break, after all. Um, I am of the opinion that homework should help you practice and internalize what you learned in class and not force you to teach mm-hmm. a subject to yourself, which some teachers don't seem to get, yes. especially in Harry Potter. Stupid teachers. I am also of the opinion that I, me, myself, and I, if I had ever been a child and in school, would have either finished my homework doing class or not at all. I wouldn't have remembered to... Do the I wouldn't have remembered that we had an assignment in the first place if I hadn't like And that's what homework diaries are for. You are expecting me to remember to actually look into said hypothetical homework journal or even remember that it ex it's like remember that it exists. Ah uh, yes. Um uh, I think I see the problem now. Good thing I never went to school. Yes. Um, by the way, Fulda Backshot is mentioned. Gonna be important later. We get some foreshadowing. I wonder whether she who must not be named planned that or just decided to use fictional history book author's name 
Oh, the, 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 she was like, yeah, these are the authors. We got them in book one. Good stuff. And she was like, later on, okay, I need this character. Who could I use? Oh, let's use this one. Because it's fitting. Maybe. Mm, I wonder. Maybe. I mean, Sirius Black was mentioned in book one, so there's that. Yeah. She did some, uh, lots of connecting uh, the threads and plot lines between books two and six. So maybe she already knew that the, the backshot was going to be important. Or maybe she didn't. We will never know. Uh, back to Harry doing his homework. He's writing, as is customary at Hogwarts, with a quill and parchment. Why can they not use normal fountain pens and stand standard paper at Hogwarts? Parchment is not good for the environment because it's made of animal skin and the poor animals. Animal abuse I can continues. Yes, for the quills maybe they have magical properties or something, but never mentioned, so not canon, mm. so I don't accept that mm -hmm. answer. And especially Harry said the Thursdays, like, okay, he has to use parchment because that's a requirement at Hogwarts for some unfathomable reason, but no one would notice if he used a fountain pen instead. There's less risk of the mm. ink bottle spilling over his bed sheets, less space taken up by the pen compared to the quill under the blanket he is hiding. Like, yes! If he accidentally breaks or knocks over the ink bottle, the resulting mess would earn Harry a beating, and I don't think that he particularly wants to get another beating. Um, well, maybe Harry doesn't actually own a fountain pen. Maybe he never thought to buy some. I can actually see that being the case. Mm. I was wondering, because Harry went on like, okay, yeah, the dress is had magic, so he has to do in secret, yada, yada, and I was like, why do you have supplies, mm. your supplies in the first place then? But then he explained that his supplies were originally locked up. And he took the first chance to retrieve them. Which was when the Dursleys were outside to marvel at their new car. Which made me wonder, are the Dursleys home all summer? We know that Petunia is a housewife. And that at least summer holidays apparently overlap with Harry's. But did Vernon take vacation for this? Or, and, or not? But is, are they just not going on trips and holidays and such? Just... Or did Harry just not want to wait for that to happen? Well, I don't know. I guess Vernon took some time off of work. Uh, who, who knows? But Harry, Harry learned to pick locks. And it made me wonder, did the twins teach him or Ron? But it's a very useful skill for Harry. It will never be mentioned again. Yeah, of course not, because why would it? He also describes his friend Hermione as the cleverest witch uh, in his year. I wouldn't say that uh, that's particularly true, because uh, Hermione is book smart and being clever is different. Agreed. He's also Griffin Gryffindor. Mm -hmm. Yes. The book tells us... Harry in the book tells us the Dursleys had completely ignored his last two birthdays. Which means that they didn't ignore the nine birthdays before his Hogwarts letter arrived. Hmm. Interesting. Wonder what they did for his birthdays. Yeah. Also, not, also technically not true because didn't he later tell us that Aunt March came over during his birthday one day? I could be wrong, I don't quite remember. Ah. Anyway, hey. yeah, uh, we not only the need, we not only need the recap, of course, we also need to have a description of our stunningly beautiful protagonist princess. Very important. Very important. So, after all that recap nonsense, it is time for Harry to receive some birthday presents delivered by Hedwig, his own owl, and Errol, the Weasley's owl, and the Hogwarts owl helping them out. Hedrick made it to France and back in two days. That is dedication. Must have been exhausting, you know. These owls can probably fly faster than normal owls, on top of being very intelligent, because otherwise how would they make this journey? And they are probably also stronger, carrying heavy books between countries or boom-serving kits. 
Poor owls. It is uh, the only explanation outside of bad writing. <sighs> yeah, poor owls, poor Errol. He was so lucky the other two found and helped him. I wonder how that went down. Because they mm. all came from different directions after all. Yes. Still, I know the VCs don't have much money, but sending Errol out is just... The poor owl. The poor, poor owl. You shouldn't do that to the poor thing. Animal abuse. Definitely. Mm. As part of his birthday presents, Harry receives a newspaper clipping with the entire Weasley family on a picture. Mm, and... Oh gosh, I can't believe I have to say this. This is good writing. Because Gabba's being mentioned doesn't seem out of place at all. It's a nice little article about Ron's family visiting Bill in Egypt, and you don't wonder why this is here, and you don't realize that it is going to become very important later on. Same with the sneakoscope. It's... Of course it would go off on the train around Scabbers, but our dear protagonists don't know that and dismiss it as a faulty joke item. I think Prison of Azkaban is, uh, generally speaking, one of her better pieces of storytelling. But of course it's not without faults because time traveling. Although, then again, the time traveling in this one is also well learned. Oh gosh. Mm -hmm. I was about to say, the time traveling is all actually not a bad aspect. I just, I just, uh, <laughs> no, Poor she's still not a good writer. But weaving in the threads like this and making them then important come later down the line. And it's, it's, you don't even notice, but it is right there. It's, it's, it's good. That's good. The plotting in this so. book is pretty neat. Good. Back to the sneakoscope. The pocket sneakoscope was lighting up at dinner and the twins had put beetles in Bill's soup. Does that count as untrustworthy? Is Scabbers untrustworthy? Or is he currently trustworthy since he's just chilling? Good question. No idea. Moving on, why are the Weasley spending an entire month in Egypt? Wouldn't it be better to put some of the money to the side for the kids? For the school supplies or maybe a new family owl? And did Errol fly all the way from bloody Egypt to England? Poor Errol. Okay, yes, they didn't spend all of it. Warden gets a new wand. But that was really necessary. This old one was a safety hazard. I agree. That they should have gotten a new owl, owl, a new owl, because poor Errol. Mm -hmm. But apart from that, so the Weasis win some gold in a lottery and instantly spend it mm -hmm. on holidays in Egypt. And I personally think that it was a good decision. Yes, they could have invested that money in material things they needed or... No, well, I, d I doubt uh, that Wizarding World has things like actual investments that you could do and make and earn money off of. I don't think they do that, because why would they? The bank is in the hands of the goblins, after all. And she must not be named, wrote them to be greedy. To anyway. Anyway. Ah, anyway. So, the these holidays, they spend not the entire, but a, a large portion of the money they won on these holidays. And it is something that makes the whole family happy. And that is worth so much more than buying material objects that you need to replace later down the line anyway. And they did actually, like I said, keep some of the gold to buy Ron a new wand and stuff, so I think it is a good way to spend that money. From what I've observed from the humans I personally know, it's like, yeah, those who spend it on material stuff all the time, even if they don't even have that money in the first place, it just doesn't really make them all that happy. And those that spend it on like holidays, going places, seeing seeing new things, or Visiting friends or family that are elsewhere makes them happy. You make it sound like I, I have, I said uh, that they shouldn't have gone on the holiday no, altogether. No, no, which is not what I no, said. I'm, I'm, not, like, okay, I'm not saying maybe that. instead I just of say, four weeks, I'm not, I'm, I spent don't, three, three weeks holiday, see place, it would still make the family very happy. And then the money they spent on the last week maybe put 
that aside and buy a new f family owl. Buy a new owl, yes. No, I was just, no, it was just a general thing because some people online say, like, why would they waste their money on that? And I'm like, that's not a waste. No, it's not a waste. Exactly, it's not a waste. It just, it made them happy. So that's the most important stuff, isn't it? And they're used to not having money anyway. Mm. Also, money aside, I want to know more about magic in Egypt. I want someone who is familiar with Egypt mythology to write that. Someone who's competent enough not to botch it up like she who must not be named it with literally every culture outside Britain's that she ever included in the Harry Potter universe. Please, someone write that. Someone who's not her. Someone who knows Egypt. Maybe there's fanfiction out there. If anyone has recommendations, please tell us. I need to know more about magic in Egypt. It doesn't even have to be yeah, fanfiction. A book, more. an actually published book would more. also do. Just more. Yes. More. But yeah, ba back to the presents that a Harry receives. A pocket sinker scope uh, from one and from Hermione a broom uh, stick serving kit. Which prompts Harry to tell us readers that Quidditch is the most popular sport in the magical world. But it is the only sport, Harry. It's like, is it? Is it the only sport? Harry, tell us. Please tell us. Because of course it would be the most popular if it's the only one. And another magical sport hasn't been mentioned so far. But we already went into that in a previous episode. Yes. Still. It's just... I'm not a fan of sports. She must not be named is also apparent. I don't know whether she was a fan, but she was just not good at writing sports, so... Mm. I hate Quidditch. Quidditch is annoying. Uh, yeah, so uh, the scratching of the quill is apparently possibly too loud for the Dursleys to overhear while they're potentially going to the bathroom at night. But laughing out loud is fine. And the monster book scuttling around and... Uh, this is a direct quote. The book toppled off the bed with a loud clank. But that doesn't wake the Dursleys. I found that entire thing weird too. They don't hear the ruckus the Weasleys and their car create in uh, book two, but they would hear the scratches of the quill when they go to the bathroom? Are their rooms soundproof and Harry has no noise insulation whatsoever? So Harry could theoretically do whatever he wants as long as uh, the Dursleys stay in their rooms, right? And I'm very glad that our books can't buy it. Why would anyone even write a book that is supposed to buy it? Wizards. Wizards. Chapter 2. Aunt Marge's Big Mistake. Which is an odd chapter title, now that I think about it. Oh well. Yes. Well, now I have for once uh, have a quote <laughs> from the book. Really? Yes, really. Let me read it real quick. Mm -mm. The Dursleys were watching a brand new television. They are not watching something on the television. They are just watching the television. That's what I get from reading that sentence, at least. They aren't watching a program on TV, but the TV itself. Which must be pretty boring, looking at a black monitor. But then, later, we learn that the TV is in fact on. And I was just like, Harry, why didn't you just say they were watching the news on the new TV? Why did you say they watched the new TV? Hmm. Hmm. Are the Harry stupid? Or she must not be named stupid, but maybe, maybe that's a language thing? I'm not sure. Mm. I did have the same thought when reading. And then wondered about the choice of grammar and then ignored it. Also, lovely foreshadowing of Sirius Black randomly on the news there. Mm -hmm. But the worst news for Harry are yet to come. Aunt Marge is coming oh, for no. a visit. She's arriving that very same <gasps> day. And Harry just. Why did he only get this news now? It's just like the Dursleys must have known, and mm. th there's no reason for them to have kept it secret from Harry. So, like, Harry, what. So did they only ever discuss it when Harry was not in the room? And maybe Weird. It must have been a coincidence. 
Also, oh. Harry's ge- oh, Harry, Harry is channeling his inner Slytherin to blackmail Vernon into signing his permission form for Hogsmeade. Ah. <laughs> Not a bad idea for a Gryffindor, I must say. So, uh, Marge, Marge, Miss Mar- Marjorie, Marge, Marjorie, yes, um, Marge is incurring, encouraging an unhealthy lifestyle. That already tells us that she is evil. She's an evil, evil person. In the eyes of she who must not be named, yes. Uh, she calls Dudley healthy-sized, when Dudley is, in fact, <sighs> not. Because the author specifically nope. wrote Harry's evil uncle and nephew to be overweight. Also, mm-hmm. like, obviously being overweight is bad for your health. And so is being underweight. Never underestimate the struggles of being underweight. But she must not be named only ever goes the fat shaming route. Honestly, I feel underrepresented. If you have to be a horrible author, at least include both sides. Well, Harry is most likely underweight of worse before he's, he went to Hogwarts. He's most definitely suffering from malnutrition. I don't trust him to eat yeah. healthy stuff and make up for no. being starved and stuff. So he should have problems. Lots of problems. He should. But he's a protagonist, so he doesn't. Magic. Magic. So, in the eyes of she who must not be named, if you are fat and, in the eyes of others, ugly and, in case you're a woman, either too feminine or too masculine, then you're definitely a bad person. Humans are always so obsessed with their appearance, it's astonishing. Mm. It is one thing to make sure you are neat and clean and healthy, and another to be concerned with beauty standards that are entirely subjective and change with time and culture and all sorts of influences. And it's not like a human can do much about their appearance anyway. Apart from operations. Which, why? Yes. Why? Yeah, well, it's just live a healthy life, take care of your hygiene. That should be enough. Yeah. I can understand operations if it's something that impacts your health. Yes. If you do it because of that, then it's understandable. And okay, maybe if uh, you had to get an operation for your health and the operation made something that wasn't horrible looking before horrible and then you do another one to undo that. Or so I, what am I even saying? Mm, yes. You know what I mean, right? I it's know like, okay, you, you, yes. you have to get operated because you were in an accident or some, or you have, I don't know, misaligned bones or some, something. Just you have to get operated for your health, for your own benefit. Mm-hmm. And then the operation, after the operation, whatever was operated... Uh, just is now warped miss what is the word misfigured yeah trend, but that's yeah. a pretty strong word something like that and then you get another operation to uh fix that again and that's yeah hmm. or maybe you get an operation uh, to benefit your health and it has an added side effect that uh it, g- it gets made a bit uh prettier as well yeah I don't know. It's just, or maybe there are reasons to get a beauty operation, to get a beauty mm. operation stuff. But like all the stuff you see online and on trash TV is just people being vain. Or yeah. Uh, anyway, so <sighs> well, you know what? It's either that hmm? being ugly, and yeah, which is very subjective. Or mm-hmm. or the villains are very handsome and pretty and charming. <clears throat> Tom Riddle. <clears throat> Tom Riddle. Where mm. are my normal, unassuming villains that anyone would overlook on the streets, which makes them all the more dangerous because no one would ever suspect a thing? I want. Are the friendly Hufflepuff from next door? Running their own crime syndicate. Well, I'm not living... Next the door. Yeah, you were living uh, indoor. S- indoors. <laughs> You're living right with me. Uh, anyway. Yes, I do. So we've met March. It doesn't end mm-hmm. there. There's also her dog, Ripper. And March spoils her dog. Let me say this. Tea <sighs> is not meant for dogs. Tea can even be poisonous to humans sometimes, if consumed incorrectly. What is it with this author abusing animals? She's feeding Fang fudge for no reason. Hedwig gets locked into her cage for a long time. 
making Errol old and weak and forcing him to deliver letters because the Weasley's poverty wasn't enough, obvious enough yet, giving Whipper tea just to show how obsessed this woman is with her dog. Oh, how this animal abuse. Oh, and there's no reason for this. Okay, maybe no. poor Hedwig, because we need to know, we have known already that the Dursleys are evil, but there's no reason, there was no reason to feed Fang fudge. There was no reason to make Errol old and weak, just to show us the Dursleys are oh, poor. We already knew that. Um, the Weasleys. Yeah, the Weasleys, sorry. The, the, the Dursleys are actually rich. Yeah, there's also no reason to give Ripper tea to show us he's spoiled. There are other ways to show you that this dog is spoiled rotten. G give uh, give the dog a, a personal a personal chef, a personal cook. Yeah. That would show he's spoiled. It's just, yeah, he's on this super special diet, uh, diet that's just catering to all his needs. And he needs this, and yes. he gets this these special treats all the time. Special healthy treats, because normal treats are also not good for your dog. Hmm. Oh, well. Yes. Other thoughts I had. Well. Yeah, because Harry's also getting tortured, not only the animals. Mm. It made me wonder that the blood protection is a bit odd, isn't it? Harry is... A bit? A bit much, yes. A bit much. Harry is only with the Dursleys for two months maximum. A year. Maximum. Often even less than that. And he hardly feels at home there, and it is only the blood relation to Petunia and Dudley, neither of which he likes, keeping a protection of that, if Dumbledore's to believe, was born out of love. Doesn't seem like it should work mm. at all, but I uh, suppose magic? It really is weird. And for that we have fanfiction. Back to the chapter. So much is staying an entire week, and Harry keeps his head down the entire week. Except for exploding a glass on the first day. Which apparently doesn't count as underage magic. Yet Dobby's floating pudding does? They can't differentiate the magic from a house elf from the magic of a teenage wizard. So how do they know the exploded glass was accidental magic? Maybe the Ministry of looked at because of Sirius. Uh, or there is something in the trace differentiating intentional and unintentional. But for some reason, it's not mm. differentiating, differentiating whoever cast it, because that totally makes sense. Um, no, it, it doesn't make sense. No. But the trace never made sense in the first place. Just uh, no faulty world building. Mm -hmm. Or maybe it's genius world building, because it shows us just how nonsensical the entire visiting world is, because nothing, nothing makes sense. There is no magic system. It was all a lie. Oh no, it was all a lie. A lie all along. Of course, Harry ha kept his head down for an entire week, except for that glass that he exploded. Everything has to go wrong in the last evening. Makes it more dramatic and devastating because Harry's efforts of a whole week are for nothing now. Aunt March, Aunt March gets drunk, and she goes off about Harry being runty and how she had her neighbor <gasps> drowner, drowner. <gasps> See. There was no need for all that fat and ugly and a mustard, must, mustard, 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 nonsense. All you needed to do was tell us she had a puppy drowned and everyone will instantly know that this person is evil and we have to hate her. Wow. Just. Wow. I hate her. Let's have a silent prayer. For the poor puppy that was drowned. <gasps> poor, poor puppy. You deserve better than being drowned. Yes, he did. They did. This is glossed over, of course. And Harry, oh, of, course. of course, gets super mad when March starts insulting his dead parents and then we get, um... A balloon aunt! <laughs> yes. A balloon aunt. A balloon aunt. Is that another human thing I don't understand? Uh, getting upset on behalf of the dead parents you never met? It's, for the most part, I can understand getting upset about insults, of course. But Harry's been managing that for an entire week, and it's much slandering his parents that finally gets to him. Why? This is actually not a critique of her writing, because I know that's a thing. 
I know that is realistic. It's just, I don't understand. Please explain that to me. Ah, uh, I mean, usually we get madder when people insult our loved ones. But Harry cares so much about people he never really met. Maybe he just puts them on a pedestal because he hates the Dursleys and he dreams of a happy, healthy family he could have potentially had with his dead parents. Maybe that's why. So Marge basically insulted his, his dream and uh, his fantasy and that's why he got, got mad. So what I get from this is that you don't understand it either. Not completely, no. Hmm. Weird. Humans are weird. Humans. Well, time for Harry to flee the scene of the crime. And wow, Harry's fast. Lucky that he, uh, he's lucky that he had put his most important stuff into the pillowcase and then left the rest in his trunk. But what about clothes and consumable items, like a toothbrush? Mm. I suppose he has enough wizarding money to replace them, but, well, he'll have to use, buy whatever the wizards use. And we know he always uses muggle stuff, except for fountain pens. I mean, clothes, the clothes from the Dursleys is, well, patched and full of holes to begin with. Mm. And uh, wrong size. Isn't it uh, Dudley's hand-me-down? Yeah. It's like, yeah, this trouser is uh, three sizes. Something else that is buggy Harry's would fit I mean, in He obviously there. can't buy muckle mm. stuff. He has to buy wizarding stuff. Wizards wear ropes. But yeah. all Harry buys is yes. uh, the school ropes. Three sets of school ropes. And it's like... Mm. There has been yes. debates about this. Is like, what do wizards wear oh. underneath? And if you wear either your no undies or normal muggle clothing underneath, for which the wizards would, of course, condemn you, pure blood at least, then yeah. he needs muggle clothes, which he can't buy with uh, wizarding money. And he doesn't either. He doesn't exchange it. He just gets his new school yeah. robes. I was about to say, he could technically ex exchange a few gallons uh, to... To pounds. So Harry is basically he naked. Doesn't. Harry, he could get a fountain pen. Harry is naked <laughs> underneath. He only owns his school robes now. He's naked oh, underneath. Gosh. <laughs> because he didn't. I mean, he has the clothes <laughs> on his back. Yeah, because that's enough. <laughs> and if, yeah, if, if they uh, are going to the wash, then um, he's naked. I mean, maybe he was clever enough to have like two sets of clothes. One for his trunk. That he just leaves there for school and then one that he uses at the Dursleys. But we don't know. I don't think Harry was clever enough. He's not. Yeah, I, I can't see Harry being clever enough to do that. He's not a Slytherin. Self-preservation, what he said. So, shouldn't this be the last straw for the blood protection? Harry's had enough. Yes. He's leaving. He has no intention of ever coming back. This is it. The protection really should have broken at that point. But it didn't, for some reason. Chapter 3. The night... <laughs> the night bus. <laughs> the night bus. Ah, uh, the night bus. The it's night, night bus. bus. So Harry's on the run. Harry's out of luck. No, he's not. Uh, trying to figure out what to do, because he's expecting to be expelled from Hogwarts, and he didn't have a plan before, and his whole life is ruined now. Oh, Harry? no. Me? Oh, the no. Grim. Ah, I mean your godfather, Sirius Black, the mass murderer. If he had actually met a Grim, well, Death Omen. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, Harry's not out of luck because uh, Harry has the sheer luck to stumble over his trunk, wand held out, and summon the night bus. The sheer luck that the night bus even exists in Harry with no means to get anywhere desperate and all that just so happens to accidentally summon it. Protagonist powers. Thanks, Sirius. Would have been nice for the night bus to have been mentioned in previous books. Just to make it a bit more believable. I mean, I had the same issue with Lockhart. I believe you did as well, Cecilia. But that's all right. Yes. We can let that slide. Book one mm -hmm. was uh, meant to, had to be a standalone because no one knew whether there would be more to be published. Yes. Whether she would be able to publish more. But uh, from book two onwards... Okay, I don't know the situation, but still, she mentioned Sirius in book one. Could have just mentioned the night bus somewhere. Hmm. Well, no. So the condition to summon it is uh, just stick out your wand. What are the logistics of that? 
literally just stick out your wand? Can't be. Stick out your wand to the street? How does the night bus know? How does it detect that? How many times has someone accidentally summoned the night bus, I wonder? A lot. Because magic. 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 Also, oh, the first name that comes to his mind is Neville's. Sweet. Mm. I, uh, I accept no other reaction. It was definitely sweet of Harry to think of Neville. It was definitely yes. not. Yes, it was. Because Neville is, uh, no, it was sweet of Harry to think of him. Mm -hmm. So, the name Night Bus is a word play, of course. Because you pronounce those two words the same. Because of course you do, because English. Unless you say, well, knight. Knight bus. Yeah. Uh, and there are no seats, but only beds. And there's like, for 15 sickles, you get a toothbrush in the color of your choice. So this implies that the bus is meant to drive during the night and transport you for long enough to actually get some sleep. But... With the speed this bus travels at, uh, and the odd teleportation thing, it wouldn't take very long to get anywhere at all. And beds instead of seats means less people fit in that bus, even with several floors, unless it's several doors or no more, so the queue can't ever be that long. I mean, perhaps it depends on your destination. Anywhere at all, as long as it's on land, means other conditions are included, right? Also, candles mm. in a bus that moves so fast you're flattened against your bed is quite dangerous, but wizards... Safety hazards all around. Ah, oh, wizards. Yeah. What a fun bus. Everything just leaps out of its way. In this case, the film actually makes more sense for once, because I imagine it to be easier to have the magic bus move out of everything's way rather than the other way around. So, Harry's on the night bus, and he and Stan, the conductor, chat about Sirius. We learn a bit more about what the man has apparently done, and then Harry, as usually, casually speaks Wally's name. And here we stand, we get our first example in this book of people being afraid of their name, which I still don't get. Fear to speak and hear the name, it's like I don't get that. We speculated about this before, I know Emberl gets scolded for ping it up again, but if, say, the taboo was in place during the first world, then it would at least make sense for those who live through it. But uh, younger generations, not as much, as they would only learn about the second hand. And how do muggle bones fit in this? And it's not like there was ever any indication that it wasn't just a clever invention Wally and his followers came up for the second war as a result of everyone fearing his name. Although it is reminiscent, and I think this might be where she came up with it, it is reminiscent of many fairy tales in which one mustn't invoke the name of something lest they draw its attention. Yes, that is actually a good point. Yeah, we already discussed it. Because, yes, it just, no, no sense. I'm still waiting for an explanation. Uh, that we will never get. Uh, so Harry eventually, fairly fast, arrives at the Leaky Cauldron where the Minister for Magic himself is already waiting for him. And they get shown to a room for a private chat and I quote Tom, the Leaky Cauldron's landlord, clicked his fingers, a fire burst into life in the grate and he bowed himself out of the room. So basically, the bartender can use nonverbal and wandless magic. He is bloody powerful. Also, the minister tells Harry, we don't punish people for a little thing like that. So blowing up your aunt is a little thing, and dropping pudding on a woman is not? He didn't even do the ledger. Or are they just lenient uh, because of black, which very likely. But yes, he shouldn't be punished for blowing up a sound. She's a horrible person after all. She drowned puppies. Ah yes, the Ministry of Magic. You get a stern warning letter for first offense against the underage magic law, even though that wasn't actually Harry's doing. Then no punishment at all for the second offense because the mass murderer is on the loose. An instant expulsion and a hearing for the third, which was in self-defense. Lovely. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's, what else can you expect from the Ministry of Magic, you know? It's, it's the Ministry of Magic, it's to be expected. Ah. But how did Harry still remember 
that his Hogsmeade permission form was not signed in the situation that he is currently in. Nowhere to go, a weird bus, a mass murderer story, fear of being expelled. And Harry thinks of going out on weekends. I would have forgotten and only remembered when lying in bed trying to fall asleep. And not while I was still in this very uncertain situation. Uh, priorities? Yeah, who cares that I don't have a roof over my head? Who cares that I just ran away from the only home I have uh, ever known? Who cares that I could be expelled? Who cares that I could be expelled from the school? For which who this ca- who cares? Is yeah. this <laughs> I could be expelled for, for, from the school that I love so dearly and view as my home. Uh, but the, the, the permission slip to go on uh, weekends, uh, to go out on weekends to the village next to the school, I could potentially be expelled from. That is the important thing, the most important thing in this situation. One word. Ah, uh, Harry. One word. Priorities. So now I'm imagining the chaos Harry's disappearance from private drive must have caused for the ministry in Dumbledore. Their precious boy who lived gone with a mass murderer on the loose who's most definitely after Harry's life. Oh no. What shall oh, we do? No. Mm. Maybe they were hoping for another breach of the statue of secrecy statute of secrecy. To le- imagine that a statue of secrecy. Hmm. A statute. Yeah, of, a statue. Yes, mm. of secrecy to locate him. Because uh, it detects where the, the stuff was performed, doesn't it? Mm. It does make sense to assume Harry would come to Diagon Alley and without access to the flu network and not having learned apparition yet, he would need to enter through the leaky cauldron. So I can see why the minister would be waiting there while his minions are uh, probably out and about looking for Harry. Mm. Chapter 4. The Leaky Cauldron. After all that drama with the Dursleys, Aunt March and Sirius Black, Harry is now having the time of his life staying at the Leaky Cauldron with direct access to Diagon Alley. Harry, 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 Harry. You can eat whatever you fancy at Hogwarts. They have a buffet. So why is your freedom of choice in the Leaky Cauldron so special that you need to mention it to us? And how do you know Diagon Alley has the most fascinating wizarding shops in the world? You have never left Britain. Or been in any magical shops outside Diagon Alley. He hasn't even been to Hogsmeade yet. It's like, you only know these wizarding shops. How can you say they are the best in the world if you don't know any others? I... Want to know more about Diagon Alley and the surrounding streets and alleys, nooks and crannies. How does it fit within, on, lon, within London without any markers noticing magic? Yes, I know. Are there more than just Diagon and Nocturne Alley? Uh, apparently there are, but I can't remember any others ever being mentioned in the books. So it's questionable whether they are canon. Mm. And if they yeah. are canon and exist, what are they for? What other shops do we have? What crafts and trades and arts and so on? Do the shopkeepers know each other, help each other out, work together? Or are they competitors competing against each other? This is the magical shopping district in the heart of London. It can't just be one measly street in the black market alley off to the side. I'm really super curious. Is there, you know, is there a shopkeepers association? With monthly meetings that randomly turn into noble balls. Hmm, I hope there is. That would be fun. Yes. Yeah. What can you expect from graduating from Hogwarts? Work for the Ministry? Or have a shop in Diagon Alley? Or in Hogsmeade? Or be poor? Yes. Let me... uh, Let me quote something for you. I totally want to do this. Harry ate breakfast each morning in the leaky cauldron, but he liked watching the other guests. Funny little witches from the country are four days shopping. Runnable looking wizards arguing over the latest article in Transfiguration Today. Wild looking warlocks. Brokers with dwarfs. And once what looked suspiciously like a hag who ordered a plate of raw liver from behind a thick wooden 
balaklava. That's horrible. Harry, how about you tell us the difference between a warlock and a wizard or a witch? And you know whose examples tell us nothing while also being very stupidly racist? Yes. This. Yes. First of all, this doesn't tell us anything of interest about the people he's watching at all. No interesting quirks or uses of mag usage of magic or anything, really. Only that witches, wizards, warlocks and hacks and dwarves are all different things. But it doesn't tell us what sets them apart, nor how Harry would know to identify them. Second of all, this sounds very sexist and racist and horribly stereotypical overall. Funny little witches from the country, he says. And a hag who ordered a raw liver from the behind a thick wool and balaclava. And on the other side you have venerable looking wizard and wild looking warlocks. We can assume to be evil, but it's also titled for the Wissengamot. Mm. And of course the raucous um. dwarves. It's just... <sighs> I personally think Dude. you shouldn't distinguish witches and wizards and warlocks by gender in the first place and rather by profession or magical ability or specialization or something. And yes, mm -hmm. historically, these terms were used for yada 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 yada, no one case. And there were historically male witches. Also, what about sorcerers? Mm. We wondered about this before. I think it was Prison of Azkaban, but uh Yeah, we glossed. I mean, we are in Prison of Azkaban. You mean a philo philosopher's stone. Yes, that's what I meant. Yes, that's what I meant. Yes. I just wrote PS. My first thought was Yes. It. <laughs> my personal sentence was personal. Yeah, personal. Also, we wondered about this before, but we. I got. I found a quote where she wants me to be named. Explained this apparently. It's in my copy of the Tales of Beetle the Bard. Uh, for Albus Dumbledore's notes in the Warlock's Harry Heart, she wants not be named. Made the following footnote. The term Warlock is a very old one. Although it is sometimes used as interchangeable with wizard, it originally denoted one learned in dueling and all martial magic. It was also given as a title to wizards who had performed feats of bravery, rather as muggles were sometimes knighted for acts of valor. By calling the young wizard in the story a warlock, Beetle indicates that he has already been recognized as especially skillful at offensive magic. These days, wizards use warlock in one or two ways to describe a wizard of unusually fierce appearance or as a title denoting particular skill or achievement. Thus, Dumbledore himself was Chief Warlock of the Wizengamot. Signed, she was not be named. This sounds like she just took the term and decided to use it willy-nilly whenever she thought it sounded fancy and then gave it some random meaning after the fact, instead of actually researching the origins and historical uses of all the different terms for magic users. In which case, she could have just made something up, like she did for most other things in her world. Either give me a sound explanation that fits with your universe, or leave it be. I do not need offhand mentions of sexist and racist stereotypes for a small scene that could have been interesting if you had actually taken the time to describe interesting things. Listing different magic, users, uh, magic user terms just because is not quirky and not interesting, and this thing them with added stereotypes offends me. Honestly, same. Same. Oh, yeah. <sighs> yeah, moving, moving on. on. Moving on. Harry tells us the ice cream dude gives him a free sundae every half hour. Let me tell you what a sundae is, and then you can tell me if a 13-year-old should eat that every half an hour. Okay, <clears throat> here we go. A sundae is an ice cream frozen dessert of American origin that uh, typically consists of one or more scoops of ice cream topped with sauce or syrup and other toppings, such as sprinkles, whipped cream, marshmallows, peanuts. Um, I don't know what these types of cherries are. Uh, maraschino cherries? The sweet little pink ones, I think. Oh, oh, these ones, I hate them. I love them. Um, or other fruits, like bananas and pineapples in a banana split where, where I'm like, 
pineapples in a banana split? Okay, sure. But anyways, this is taken from Wikipedia because Wikipedia is always very informative. Uh, and these days it's actually kind of reliable. Yes, which is nice. Uh, wait, let me... Yeah, Google tells me that's the, the, the pink ones, but also super... It's like bo different types, but the ones that are like candy, jelly candy. I don't like them. I really, really like them. Not... Huh. I wouldn't eat a handful of them, but if you have like one or two as a topping, mmm. Mm. So is the ice cream no. dude a fan of Harry's and rich enough to give him free ice cream every half hour without losing money? Or maybe Harry is attracting business for him? Also, that's way too much sugar. Way too much sugar. Right. How is Harry not hyperactive with all this sugar he's consuming? Well, well, maybe he's... I don't get hyperactive from too much sugar. But I'm dead. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Demon. I think HDHD people also don't really uh, the, the 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 and the one that is like when the one that is hyperactive in mind and not in body. I think they also don't mm. have that, or some of them don't. Just like Maybe coffee doesn't work. Can see that coffee just does not work. Yeah. Well, I've been told <sighs> all my symptoms of being undead can also be uh, similar to what in. in it was previously called ADD. I think it's now like inattentive HDAD or something. I'm not sure, but it's like their symptoms overlap a lot with me mm. being dead. Undead. Yes. Yes. Ah. On the matter of uh, money. Money rules the world. Yes. Harry tells us he's been a good boy and refrain from spending his money on a galaxy model that um what did uh, what exactly did he say would have meant that he never had to take another astronomy lesson i have issues with this just because you can buy a galaxy in a glass ball doesn't mean you can skip astronomy lessons or is everything neatly labeled with additional knowledge at the side like an interactive te textbook maybe that must be very expensive, though. It's like, oh, why, why would he go for... It's like, ah, oh, Harry, Harry. It is commendable on Harry's part, though, that he does not give in to the urge to spend his money on everything he can get his hands on. Like golden game pieces for a game he doesn't even play in the first place. Very commendable. I would have totally mm -hmm. bought the moving galaxy model. Dude, that's awesome. I don't even care whether it's actually accurate or not. Yes, that's true. It must must have looked awesome. And uh, it, had I had the money, I also probably would have bought it. But not for the reason Harry states. Because it's like, I would still need to go to ast my astronomy lessons. In the middle of the night, know? on a weekday. Because yes. that makes sense, yes. Yes, totally makes sense. Uh, let's uh, have sleep deprived children. But uh, who cares about Quidditch? Moving galaxy model in a glass ball. Gimme. Yes, gimme. Uh, Quidditch. But now that you've mentioned Quidditch, uh, the Firebolt can go from 0 to 150 miles per hour in just 10 seconds. That's 241.4 kilometers per hour. And that's bloody fast. And they fly on these things without protective goggles? How do they do that? And why would they want to do that? Yeah, super fast broomstick that cannot be safe for use. For your poor, squishy human body. And how would you even have the reaction time to make use of all the precision at high speeds? Like, psh, give me the galaxy model. Yes, give me the galaxy model. And books. Lots yes, books. and lots of books. And a cat. Always. And if I, for some unfathomable reason, were muggle-raised, side-eyes Harry, I would try to get my hands on as much information, preferably in the form of books, about magical customs and manners and histories and holidays. That don't seem to exist because wizards are apparently Christian. As I could. I want books. Mm -hmm. I want to know about this stuff. Like, I come into this world, I want to know how it works. What are the customs? Tell me. Yeah, you, well, you wouldn't be muggle-raised, you would be demon-raised or raised by dead people, or both, raised by dead demons. Yep, in which case my point still stands, actually. True, true. 
On the matter of books, Harry goes to buy his new school books and the shopkeeper is gearing up to retrieve one of the feral monster books for him. Before Harry tells him the good news of not needing one. And ah, am I glad that I would not have taken care of magical creatures. Which is, objectively speaking, the only sensible and useful out of the five electric subjects. Okay, well, that depends on what you consider canon and depends which teacher you have, of course, because Hagrid is, uh... Yeah, Hagrid. Hagrid is Hagrid. So, there are three different ways, in my opinion, to evaluate the five electives. Poorly book canon, extended whatever she was not be named set at one point or another canon, and fandom head canons. By the books alone, we of course know exactly what care of magical creatures under Hagrid and divination under Trelawney are all about, and we can get a fairly good guess of muggle studies, though it appears to be taught by someone with zero exper expertise and experience on muggles, so it's pointless, but I could be wrong there. Not sure whether that was book canon. Anyway, might as well be. There is not much known about Arithmancy in study of ancient runes. Arithmancy by name alone implies divination by numbers. Just like necromancy is technically divination using the dead and not raising the dead for your own nefarious purposes and making you zombie slaves. Anyway, divination. Study of ancient runes implies, well, studying runes. And Hermione once mentions translating runes for her owl exams. And the ones she mentions are Futhark, but the meanings are completely different compared to this world's Futhark runes. So it's the runes, but with different meaning for mm. some reason, because wizards. Now, wizards. in extended canon, what the name implies, what the names imply is canon in extended. She wants that be yeah. So, Arithmancy is a form of divination, which uh, seems pointless. Perhaps it's about probability, but it's not really math magic, mm. unfortunately. And study of ancient runes is basically a language class for a dead language, just like Latin. Which uh, Latin would be so much more useful for these kids. It shouldn't be an elective. It should be a mandatory class, but it's not existent at all. Now, <sighs> fandom has taken these subjects and done its own thing, thing with it, because fandom is always awesome like that. Mm -hmm. Sometimes. Depends on, the fan depends on the fandom and on the subject. Mm -hmm. And also the fandom space you're in. Anyway, so for Muggle studies. It's probably a class all Muggleborns would fail, because the teachers would wizards to think Muggles are alike, and that sounds to me like it might as well be canon. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. Ancient runes in Fanon can actually be applied with magic and to set up wards and the like, similar but also different to spells, each having its own merits and disadvantage. And there's certainly more than one type of runes. Heracles, for example, would be quite useful if your name is Bill Weasley and you work as a curse breaker in Egypt. That would indeed be very useful. And arithmancy is number magic. Divination could be part of it, but first and foremost, it's about numbers. I personally like the idea of 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 creating magical um, matrices with numbers, or with runes, and getting up to all sorts of complicated no good with that, because that would be awesome. And math, I love math. Yes. So. What would we choose if we were forced to attend Hogwarts? Me or you first? You had an entire monologue just now. So me. Sure. Me, me, me. Sure. I would take care of magical creatures. <laughs> that is a lovely wordplay. <laughs> it wasn't even intentional. That makes it better. Um, <laughs> hmm. Uh, sadly, in Harry's year, I would get Hagrid as a teacher. I would have enjoyed the first lesson, why I would have preferred for it to be less dangerous. But the rest of the year, what was it? Flower worms? And then the exploding thingies for fourth year? Oof, 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 uh, um. I wouldn't take divination. Because I can't see myself being a true seer and I'm not creative enough to make stuff up that would uh, give me good marks. Uh, study of ancient runes. Since it's basically just a language class, you can't do anything with it. Well, that's a no. I'm generally bad with languages. 
the fanon, however, that would be very fascinating. Same goes for Eric Manzi. Canon, not really, but Fanon. Yes. Would you leave Muggle Studies? So by Canon, Care of Magical Creatures and Muggle Studies. And by Fanon, Care of Magical Creatures, Eric Manzi and a Study of Ancient Ruins. So much classwork. Yes. Why would you willingly choose more than you have to? Because they're interesting. There's the person who would rather have an interesting subject than easily earn monks. Anyway. Yes. By canon alone, I would personally run, just like you, into the problem of only really wanting to choose one. But we are required to choose at least two electors. <sighs> yeah, same. Divination is of no use if you aren't a seer, so pointless. Arithmancy is basically divination, but with numbers, so why would I want that? Muggle studies is of no interest to me, and as a veteran, I would never choose that anyway, and I will set the head on fire if it sends me anywhere else. Mm -hmm. Except for Ravenclaw, perhaps. Maybe. Depends. Mm -hmm. I don't know Ravenclaw well enough. Care of magical creatures is fine as a subject, but just not for me personally. I would be perfectly fine with, like, felines, cats, all the way, and snakes, and thestrals, but... Hippogriffs? Unicorns? No. Just no. No. And under Hagrid you get flobber worms and blast and its groots and that's, that, that, that's even worse. Uh, Study of ancient runes? Yes. Well, it's the only one left over. That one I would actually be interested in though. Even if it is just a language class. I would also be interested in learning Latin. Yeah. It's, and, you know... I would probably find a way to implement runes in actual magic. Reinvent some ancient type of rune magic just because. <laughs> yeah, just because. Why not? Yeah, I can, I can see you doing that, to be honest. Uh, you could uh, also choose divination and just make stuff up. You could live out your creative freedom and that's at least something to keep yourself occupied with. Hmm, yeah, I suppose. And since I like morbid things, Trelawney would have a field day. Oh, yes. But like I said, I'd rather have an interesting, useful subject than easily earned good marks. Doesn't mean I would choose three subjects, though. First and foremost, because I don't like any of these subjects. And second of all, because like that's too much work. Hmm. Just because I want it to be interesting doesn't mean I want to have extra work. And if you predicted yourself falling down the stairs... That might as well happen. <laughs> True. They don't even need to move for that to happen. <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah, stairs are uh, a nightmare. A safety hazard. Yeah, just, uh, just predict, yeah, uh, during the course of this school year, I will fall down the stairs at least once. At least ten times. Yes. Easy peasy. Don't even have to do mm -hmm. it on purpose. Good thing I'm already dead. Yes. Truly, why would anyone want to go to Hogwarts? The classes are useless. The teachers are not at all qualified to teach and certainly no good at it. Not even McGonagall. The entire castle is a gigantic death trap. The headmaster enables the castle to become an even deadlier death trap and adds his own death traps. And the head won't even put you in the house you want to be in. Horrible. Maybe we should look into other magical schools. Well... For us on mainland Europe, Bobaton and Durmstrang are options. Unless you're muggle-born, in case of the latter. Going by book canon, they're not that stereotypical sexist as the films portray them either. Although, the, the Bobaton is French. Mm. Yeah, I'm, 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 the, the English don't like French for some historical reason and I'm just, I don't know. But they have macarons. Anyway, Mom. yeah, and and Durmstrang is dark and cold. Yes, so more suited for you than for me. Yes. So yeah, almost all classes at Hogwarts seem either pointless or untaught in a student-friendly way. The latter might be due to Harry's limited POE rather than actually being horrible classes, but that's all we got. And Harry's POE tells a story of Hobble the teaching all around. But 
do you even need five to seven years of astronomy for? Muggles may choose to mm. take it for two years around where we live, and that's already plenty for school-level education. I guess you can add magic into that, but... Yeah. Mm. And no one needs to go to class at midnight just to look at the stars. No. No. Lots of people online already pointed out how bad of a choice it is not to continue classes like math and English. And Latin would make so much <sighs> sense in the context of the magic system, if it even can be called con one, which it can't because it's not existent. But there's not even an option for an extra class. Or, like, what about a class examining what magic actually is, how it works, the basic principles and science behind it? And you could invent new spells. Yeah, people must know enough about magic in the non-existent system to know how to do that. Hmm. 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 Anyway, back to the book of monsters. Interesting that the shopkeeper immediately assumes Harry needs the book of monsters. What if you hadn't chosen the detective? I can see it being extremely popular. It's the only sensible of the actors after all. But still, I personally wouldn't choose it. And I'm sure there are other students who feel the same. Or maybe some who don't want to get their hands dirty. For which apology must be a torture. Or something. Makes me wonder why Draco, of all people, would choose it. Because he knew his crush, Harry Potter, would choose oh. the subject. Oh yes, of course. Uh, yeah. yeah, good enough reason. Poor shopkeeper has to handle ferocious books no one told him how to tame. Ah, <sighs> poor guy. He says, thank heavens for that. So Mr. Shopkeeper is religious. Since wizards celebrate Christmas and Easter, they are apparently Christian. Wonder how that works with, you know, being magical. Mm. I'm sure there's an explanation. I'm sure it makes sense. Not sure. Why would you buy invisible books? No clue. Yeah. The, why, how would you even write that? Invisible. In the the ink that turns invisible later on parchment that turns invisible later and uh, add a spine tree that also turns invisible later. Oh no, don't tell me the books are also made of parchment. Oh, oh no, no. Well, what else would they be made out of? Well, but it's like, they always write on scrolls of parchment. I assume actual books mm. are not scrolls, but well, actual paper? Yeah. <gasps> oh no, the wizards know what paper is. Oh well. Uh, Harry then uh. returns to his room at the Leaky Cauldron and he tells somebody had been into tidy and this is not a book note, more of a personal note. I know this is a hotel thing and I know you can put up a sign for them not to clean it. But I personally don't like the idea of a stranger cleaning a room with my things in it while I'm elsewhere. Like why would I not put up the sign? Even if my important stuff is either with me and or locked in my suitcase just... I don't like the idea of a stranger cleaning the room where my stuff is. Same. Same. And if you tell them to not clean your hotel room, it has the added benefit of, of being environmental uh, friendly. And sometimes you get little, little gifts too. That sounds nice. Yes. Uh, it's, it is. It's like if you're staying for a week or more for an extended period, okay, then it makes sense that you would have to, like, some... Yeah, Allow maybe them to clean, clean your room once. once and to change the towels yes. and all of that. But if you're just for a few days, having a do day, them do a day, no. No. See, that's why we can never no. stay for long. See, I would not be able to stay longer than a week because then I would have to let them in and I don't want that, so. No can do. No can do. The Beasties and the Grangers also arrive at the Leaky Cauldron at the last day of the holidays. Finally. Mr. and Mrs. Granger just dropped Hermione off in the morning? Not checking that Mr. and Mrs. Weasley are really there and going to look after her? Make sure she gets to the station with them tomorrow? Not that I'm a parent, but I would be more concerned for my non-existent child. Well, Harry only gets up around lunch, which honestly same. And Ron and Hermione have been looking for him everywhere all morning, so I'd assume the Grangers dropped her off with the Beasties. A fair point. We will never know because Harry doesn't ask. He's not... He, no. He doesn't have the right uh, 
framework in his brain to consider that that might be a mm. bad thing. He doesn't have parents after all. <sighs> Still, it is never a good idea to go shopping for school supplies on the last day before the new school year starts. Definitely not. We learned that one's pet rat hasn't been looking good since Egypt. Oh no, he's lost weight. I don't think Scarus is sickly because of Egypt. Maybe an escaped convict has something to do with it. Hmm? Peter could have just escaped to a different family. Sirius would have never found him. But thus Peter knows Sirius escaped because he recognized Peter in the Daily Prophet? Probably not. So he's living in fear, not knowing whether Sirius will find him and kill him. Hmm. Weaving together small details for the grand revelation at the end. Uh, yeah, book three oh. is good in that. Yes. Uh, yay. Okay. Same for Sirius muttering, he's at Hogwarts in his deep. As we don't know then this chapter, it's just... He's at Hogwarts. He's at Hogwarts. No, it's not Harry. It's Peter. Nope. Mm -hmm. It's the rat. <sighs> Enough pricing. So, we enter the magical menagerie. What are double-ended newts and how do they function? Somehow, that makes me think of earthworms. If you cut them in half, both half ca uh, halves can uh, continue living independently. I don't think that applies to double-ended newts. Well, who, who knows? They also have purple toads. Are they venomous? Probably not. But they might be poisonous. Although there are rare species that are in fact venomous frogs. Uh, the tortoise with a jewel encrusted shell sounds nice. That would be a perfect target to steal and exploit and then where will the poor tortoise be? Oh gosh, oh gosh. Um, would you like the poisonous orange snails? Because poison. But orange. And snails. Although, I mean, snails are fine. Not as bad as lux, but why would I want snails? If I want something with poison, I could get venomous snakes. What was the difference uh, with poisonous and venomous again? <laughs> See, that's the thing. Uh, there is no difference. But there also is a wow. difference. There is a difference. Oh. There is and there is not a difference. <sighs> Lovely. Basically, venomous bites you and you bite poisonous. Hmm. But poison is often generally used for toxins. So it's technically also the general term, but also not. Historically, the distinction only came during, I don't know, the 19th or the 20th century. Also, of course, heavily depends on the language you're speaking. Because other languages don't really do that. Some do, not all of them. I think it's easier to say poison is passive. It's a harmful and or lethal chemical substance. So it's like, yeah, if I have some poison in my cupboard and put it in your tea, it's poison. It's passive. It doesn't. I'm putting oh. it in your tea and you ingest it and then it acts up. Hmm. I'm not injecting it at you actively like venom is. Yeah, the general term is technically toxin, but because poison is just more widespread, People just say mm. it's po every toxin is poison, but technically venom and toxin poison. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, enough of enough of the venomous and when it bites uh, you, poisonous. When it and... bites you, you bite the toxin. And both make you die, hopefully. Okay, okay. Wait, you would get a raven. Or one of the cats. Both? Cat. Always the cat. All hail the cats. Or a snake, but cat. 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 That's why I necked you to get toffee from the shelter after all. Cat. Yes. Cat. When uh, it's the children's turn, the shopkeeper tells Ron to uh, bang scabbers on the counter. Ron, thankfully, does not do that. Peter deserves it, but not an ordinary rat. I wonder whether that's slang or something. You know... A phrase people say but don't mean literally. Like, mm, I'll get out of your possible. hair. I will not literally get out of your hair. I will mm. metaphorically get out of your hair. Yeah, could be. Could be. 
So the shopkeeper tells us that ordinary rats uh, don't live longer than three years. One uh, has had uh, scabbers with him for one year already. Wasn't it two years? Do we know? Two years? He had him in first year, we're yeah. in third year. Was he already there in first yes, year? Yes, he's literally there on the train ride and Ron tries to turn him yellow. Oh. And then Hermione barges in Poor being rich. all snobbish and, 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 and bookish and Hermione. Okay, two years. You've got dirt on your nose. Did you know that? <laughs> yes, yes, uh, yeah. Do we know at this point how long Percy has had the red? Because if they only live up to like three years, then that would be like one year in possession of Percy and a baby red at that point. Which he wasn't. Uh, no. Well, I think it was 12 years, but I think we learned that at the end of book three. Well, it's definitely been 12 years because, well, Scabbers has been a red for 12 yeah. years. And we can assume he might have directly gone to the Weasleys. Who knows? But who knows? It's been very long and they never had him as a baby because Peter never was a yeah. baby red. Mm -hmm. I think reds these days actually have even shorter lifespans, but I could be wrong. Mm. So you meet Crookshanks, the best cat ever. And Scabbers flees outside, and I'm surprised they managed to find the rat at all, but whatever. So, after getting the bestest cat... Oh, 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 hmm? Does that mean Toffy is not the bestest cat ever? The best cat in the Harry Potter universe. Yes, that I can agree on. Okay, yes. Well, no, Toffy is not. My soulmate is the bestest cat ever. Well, well... Toffy bites and scratches. And annoys you for two hours when you are trying to sleep. And has severe abandonment issues. <sighs> yeah, And steals your true. pillow at night. But you can forgive her for that because <sighs> she's a pouring mass of cat. Yes. Anyway, so after getting the bestest Harry Potter cat ever, the trio returns to the Leaky Cauldron where they find Mr. Weasley reading the newspaper. About Sirius Black, of course, because what else? What else? He tells us that everyone at the ministry is hunting serious. Imagine that being meant literally. How does the ministry still function? Nothing would get done. <laughs> Wouldn't make a difference, would it? <laughs> yeah, true, true. Uh, very much true. Nothing gets done even if a normally functioning ministry. <sighs> Percy has been selected as a head of person. The twins say Percy will probably be uh, the last uh, hedge boy in the family. And Mrs. Weasley says that she isn't doubting that. The twins aren't prefects, so that checks out. But what about Ron? Have they already written that possibility off? That must sting a lot. And Ginny is a girl and everything is gendered. Although... Yeah, also, you don't have to be a prefect is. to be selected head boy because I'm pretty sure no. James Potter was not a prefect because Remus Lupin was the prefect. Oh, yeah. But James Potter was selected as head boy together with Lily. Weird. With Lily because Dumbledore. Uh, oh, so I disagree with all weird, of that, weird, but weird. whatever. Anyway, so yeah, it mm -hmm. is not mentioned because why would she, why would the author do that? But it is obvious where one's self esteem issues come from. And they become relevant uh, some, in some of the later books. The last one at the latest. It, it does become relevant at some point. It would have been good for her to like, like make a little mention of one's face mm. distorting or something like that. But no, no. Yeah. Mm. So Harry, thanks to his dubious luck. Later that day, over here's Mr. and Mrs. Weasley arguing about whether to tell Harry about Sirius. Harry doesn't, of course, overhear the important emotional outburst worthy part. Because we need to keep that secret a little longer to get an emotional outburst data on. But, mm -hmm. as we've already established in Chapter 3, Harry's not worried about the mass murder out for his life. All the ominous Azkaban guards, everyone seems to be terrified. No. Harry's worried he won't get to this, uh, the village with it. Um, what's so special about Hogsmeade again? That you can't get either a diagonally or Hogwarts? Oh yeah, butterbeer. Hmm. Is that a kid's thing? 
being excited about being allowed to go to a village with some shops. Harry justifies that he should be allowed to go with... <clears throat> He'd escaped Voldemort three times. He wasn't completely useless. <laughs> 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 oh, 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 Harry, Harry, love, none of these were due to your own merit. You escaped through sheer dumb luck and the power of love. Not because you ever actually stood a chance. Ah, poor Harry. This is where we'll end it. That's enough. Yep. That's enough. Right. Everyone, yes. you can yes, find yes. us as always on Twitter, Spotify, and YouTube. So far, maybe one day more sites, but so far only those three at Tea and Toffees. Yes. And if you enjoyed this episode, leave us a comment. What is your favorite magical creature? Uh, of both the Harry Potter universe and uh, the one that we all are currently stuck in. Yes. Uh, also, a like, a subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Thank you. We will see you next time. Our next episode continues Legend of Korra. Well, not continues. It continues the Avatar Saga, and we are doing an episode about Legend of Korra. And then something yes. else, and then something else again, I believe, and then Harry Potter again. In two months. Mm. Harry Potter will continue in two yeah. months. So, we we'll see you next yes. time. Yes. Bye bye. Bye. bye.